Habits, small disciplines, big results. Today, we're continuing our series on habits. We're actually in a bigger series about transformation. And um, I had the joy and the privilege, just first I have the joy and privilege of just being here. Uh, I, I praise the Lord for the honor and the opportunity it is to serve you as your senior pastor. And last night, we had an awesome time with the staff and the church council and the deacons and, their, and all the wives. So it was an incredible dinner. It was so awesome. Get, I just want you guys to give a hand to your staff, your deacons, the church council. They're servants. Many of them do this as a volunteer thing. They spend hours in prayer and planning and, and organizing and, and just thinking about the church. And I just love that. And it's interesting, when you have dinner with people and you get to know the couples, it's just amazing to see, you know, people. There's a great book it reminded me of by a guy named John Ortberg. He's a pastor in, in California, and he used to be in Willow Creek Church in, Cal in Chicago. And um, you can look this up. This is a great book. If you want to grow spiritually, it's a great book to read. It's called Everybody's Normal Until You Get to Know Them. And that was my experience last night with our, <laughs> it was so awesome. Like, you go, wow, these are normal people. And then you get to hear their stories like, wow, that's interesting. And that's actually true of all of us, right? We've all got our stories. We've all got our stuff. We've all got our histories. It's funny. It's crazy. It's sad. It, it's all the crazy mess of life. And so I love watching, just getting to know uh, the people of this church and seeing their heart and their, their histories. And that's really what it's all about, the transformational process. Uh, teenagers, uh, we were all there at some point. No, not all these adults have it all together, they didn't, and they didn't have it together when they were 15 years old, I promise you. So ask your parents to show you the pictures in the yearbook, and they look just like you just a long time ago. <laughs> and so we're all a work in progress, right, church? And so we want to see this transformation. And so I just want to review a little bit of what we've been talking about. Um, but first, real quick, habits. Who, had, uh, who can remember your last day of work this week, okay? You probably woke up, right? What do you do after you wake up? Maybe some breakfast. Uh, and it's really similar. You can wake up. Maybe the first thing is this. You know, who does this? Like, oh, you wake up. Or you turn off the alarm and you go, some of us are doing that right after we wake up. And then maybe it's like, okay, let's get some breakfast. You get dressed. Some of us take showers. Some of us need to take showers. Um, and then you drive to work, and you're driving to work, and some of us are like, oh, I don't know. You go the same way every day to get to work. Then you have lunch. You, you get to talk to some people at work, the same people. It's the same kind of habits, the same kind of routine. You drive home. You don't even remember the drive home because it's just a habit. You do it by nature, and you don't even think about it. Um, and then you have dinner, and then you, you, you put the kids to bed. If you have kids, you veg out, maybe a little bit of Netflix or something, email. Then you go to bed, you know, and then uh, maybe you try to make your move with your wife or something, you know. Maybe it's not a lucky night. I don't know. This is the habits, okay? These are the habits that we have, right? Right? It's habit. Every day we have a habit. Much of what we do, almost 40% of what we do is unconscious. We don't decide to wake up and, and, you know, go straight to the phone. It's just a habit. We just do it. We're not deciding our daily life. It's just we wake up and we have to live our life and we do it. And so if you want your life to change, if you want to be transformed, you've got to get conscious about what are the things that need to be changed. So last week, we talked about people that have similar goals, but different results. We all want to see things happen, but not everyone has sees change. So what was the difference of people that change and don't change? Why don't we see change? So this is just reviewing. We talked about how, number one, we try and we just don't see results fast enough. You know, I've been trying to lose weight for a week. Well, yeah, you're not going to lose 100 pounds in a week. And so we give up because we don't see things happen fast enough. Another thing that happens, we wrongly conclude then that the small little things don't matter. I mean, I tried to eat right for a week, and I got on the thing, and I gained two pounds. So I'm never going to lose weight. So give me the fried chicken. Give me the, 
you know, choco flan, whatever it is, just give it to me. I know all week everyone was talking about choco flan, so. <laughs> and then we, we realize that and we, we forget that our life is the sum total of all of the small decisions that we make. You see, our goals don't determine our success. We talked about this last week. It's the systems that we put in place, the habits that we create that determine our success. And we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of your systems. And we all have a system. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. And then to finally conclude our last week's uh, message, successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. So people who are losing weight, it's the same story every time. They all tell you the exact same thing. I changed my habits, eating habits. I started to change the way I eat, and I started getting more active. I mean, no matter what testimony, no matter what product they're using, people get into, well, this product helped me. That, no, 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 no. What really did it was they changed the little things they, they ate and how they ate, and they, they got more active. I would park at the end of the parking lot and walk, and I had like... 10,000 walk meters, uh, 10,000 steps I had to do every day. It's the small things. So, I want to look today a little bit in depth of a man who had a habit, a system that made a difference in his life. And we, 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 we hinted at it last week, but it's Daniel, okay? So we're going to get into a little bit of Daniel. He had one habit that made a huge difference. It made him impressive among 120 of his peers. When you think of Daniel, what do you think of? Daniel and the lion's den, right? We don't think of Daniel, the guy who prayed three times every day. That's not our first impression. It's Daniel and the lion's den. And he was so awesome that, that the king wanted to put him as the king over all, uh, as the leader over the whole kingdom. He had a spirit of excellence. It says this in Daniel 6, 3 through 5. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct and government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They, tr they hated this guy. You know, when you're successful, people are going to get jealous. And so out of the 120 leaders that he was a part of, he was number one in the king's eyes. And so all the other 119 were like, let's find something wrong with this guy. So let's look at his life. So they went to his personal life, his conduct. Maybe he's got a Sancha on the side. He's got another woman. And so let's see. And they, they follow him around. Nope, no other woman. There's a funny story I heard the other day about following people around. And other women. It's interesting. And, and they couldn't find it. And so they said, maybe, maybe this guy's got an addiction, you know, a personal conduct. He's got an addiction. So maybe he's on drugs or something. They followed him around, no drugs, nothing. Then they said, maybe in the government affair, maybe the guy's taking bribes. He's got the, um, you know, the cartel giving him money and he's allowing them to get away with stuff. And they couldn't find the evidence of that. They could find no corruption in him. Because he's, he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Maybe he's lazy. Nope, none of that. The only thing they could find against him was that he prayed three times a day. The only thing they could do was that he was a person of prayer. And so what they did was they went to the king to trap Daniel. So they said, king, here's what we're going to do. Let's make a, a law, and we're going to make an image of you, king, and everyone in the whole nation has to bow down to that image of you. And they knew that Daniel would not do it, because they knew he was faithful to his God and, and his faith. And then they said, and so for 30 days, everyone is forced to bow down to an image of you, O king. And if anyone doesn't, we're going to throw them in the lion's den and let the lions eat them. What do you think, king? And the king going, hmm, I am pretty great. I would love it if everyone bowed down to an image of me. And so he did it, and he passed the law. And look at Daniel's response. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds to charge against Daniel. Oh, wait, wait. 
next one, sorry, I was in the wrong passage. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where his windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got on his knees and prayed, giving thanks as, uh, thanks to his God, just as he had done before. What did Daniel do? He just kept his habits going. He didn't change a thing. He's just going to pray just like he'd done before, and he gave thanks. It was one small habit, one thing. And he prayed just like he always did. And you see, when I think of my life and the success, any success that I've had in my life, anything, it, it has all been through the small, small habits. And I want you to think of one habit a year. And where I see failure in my life, it's because of failing in, in one or two small habit areas of my life. And so I want you to think about what, what is an example of this. For me, for example, if I want to be a great husband, dad, pastor, leader, how do I do this? And, and as a tip, by the way, you can't do it all, all the time, but you want to practice most of the habits that you create most of the time. So just one habit a year, what are some examples? Like, for example, uh, flossing, okay? I had a friend who was a dentist, and we would go to the Tarumata Indians in Mexico, and, and we would share Christ with them. But he was a dentist, and he would always come in and help them with their teeth. And he goes, John David, if you can tell them anything, if you can tell them anything, tell them to floss. The secret to good teeth is flossing. It's not even brushing, he said. It's flossing, because it's the stuff that gets in between your teeth. That's where all the cavities start so he's like, tell them to floss. And uh, I was like, well, they don't have, we don't have a lot of floss out here in the middle of the Tarumara Sierra, you know. And so what happened? He says, well, there's a lot of trees. Just get a little stick and, uh, 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 and you're ready to go. So flossing is one idea, okay? As a family, my wife and I said as a family, before we even came to this church or actually were involved in any church, uh, I mean, and on staff or being paid at any church, uh, we said, we're going to go to church every Sunday. That's just a habit we decided. You know, it's, it's, you know, I can't cheat like, I'm the pastor, so I have to come to church every Sunday. No, 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 no. Even before I was a pastor of a church, I decided I'm going to go and worship the Lord every Sunday with my family. And even when we're on vacation, if I'm somewhere else in some other part of the country, Sunday morning, my kids, my son doesn't have to ask, are we going to church today? He knows. Sunday, church. Let's all get up and go. It's a habit. Uh, when I was first became a believer, I made a commitment. I'm going to read three chapters a day of the Bible. You know how long it'll take you to read the whole Bible if you read three chapters a day? One year. You'll go through the Bible in a year, just three chapters a day. And so that's one habit. Uh, another one is just praying. This is one I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now, is praying with my wife. Praying, and it doesn't have to be huge. Just, just before I go to work, I'm going to hold your hand. We're going to pray. Um, another one is getting rid of sodas. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do sodas. The other day I, I, I saw the, uh, the apple sole, whatever that thing is. The manzana, oh my goodness. I had a little bit of manzana soul. But I'm trying to get rid of the sweets because I got a lot of sweets right here. So, <laughs> so get rid of the drinks, you know. Exercising, that's another one. I'm working on that one. Uh, I've been posted on Facebook. I am exercising. That keeps me accountable, okay. So if you guys don't see me posting my jogs and say, hey, what's up, John David? Where are you still working out? Because I need that accountability, but it's one habit. If you just did one habit a year, after 30 years, you'd have 30 strong habits. And that would change who you are. That would change your identity. That would change all, a lot about you. So one habit. So my question is this. Based on who you want to become, remember we talked about becoming, not, not just the goal, but actually the person you want to be. What is one habit you need to start this year? So this is your homework, by the way, for this week. What is one habit? So y'all on Facebook, go to the UBC, uh, UBC Facebook page and put your habit on there. I want to do this one thing. 
this one habit. It doesn't have to be big. It's better if it's small. It's better if it's just something tiny. Maybe I'm not going to hit the snooze button. Like after the alarm goes off, I'm actually going to wake up. That's a good idea. Um, Or maybe before I do Facebook and Instagram and all this, I'm going to read my Bible. Just put your Bible app right above the Facebook app. And when you want to go to the Facebook, you just go up one and hit the Bible. That's one, one little thing that you can do to change your life. Maybe it's being organized. You just say, look, I, I'm just going to make my bed every day. I'm just going to make my bed. And y'all look this up if you haven't seen it. Look up the, um, this guy giving a speech on making your bed from the military. And he says, all discipline starts with making your bed. Just one little habit. You want to be a godly example to your teenager? How about, we're just going to have a Bible plan we read together. Just five minutes a day or five days a week or three days a week. Heck, start with one day a week. Grab your teenager and say, let's read this one chapter together and then talk about it. Okay, now go play a game or whatever. I want to be a healthier person. So this week, I'm going to, this year, I'm going to eliminate soft drinks or whatever. So let's, let's go to school now, okay? Let's go to schooling, and I want to just give you just a method on how to do, how to create a new habit, okay? So how do you create a new habit? You have to create a system. Now some of us, when we hear system, like some of us are like, yes. You know the organized personalities? How many of you guys that one with the checklists? Like you have a checklist for everything. And if you're not doing your checklist, you're like, life is falling apart, my checklist. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, we have some confessions out there. That's good. That's not me. I'm like, whatever. I can just live whatever. And I think, listen, I think I deceive myself. I don't have systems. Who's that? Who's the person? I'm just freewheeling and fun, and I have no systems. Yes, you do. We all have systems. Maybe your system is just to wake up and be late all the time. (laughs) Always late. That's your pattern. That's your habit. And then you're yelling at the kids all the time. Blah, 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 shut up, be quiet, blah, blah, blah. Maybe your system, you're doing your makeup in your car every day, makeup in the car. And then one day you get poked because you almost have an accident. <laughs> true story, true story. Ask Patricia about that. <laughs> Maybe your system is complaining. The way you handle life is to complain about it. You see things, and you just see the negative instantly. Why this? Why that? This person? Maybe your system is negativity. You see somebody, and you always move towards the negative. Well, they're a jerk. They must be a jerk. I can tell. (laughs) Maybe guilt is your system. You just thrive on guilt. And if you don't feel bad about something that you're doing or not doing, then you got to go do something to make yourself feel bad about what you're doing or not doing. Whether you want to or not, we all have systems that we live in and live by. So my question is, why not choose intentionally systems that are going to help you grow in life and bless yourself and bless the people around you and watch this cause you to become more like Jesus? Isn't what this whole Christianity thing is about is me being more like Jesus and loving people with his love? I think that's what it's all about. So admit, everybody raise your right hand, I have systems. <laughs> Come on, I have systems. Okay, now, 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 now let's just decide today, I'm going to make them count. Okay, I'm going to make my systems count. Okay, so here's how it works. It's called a habit loop, Okay. First, there's a trigger. Something happens and you're triggered. You see something, you see someone, you feel something, you feel, so- you feel something, and you go, okay, this is what I feel, or this is what I see, or this is what I experience. And then you have a trigger, and then that causes you to act. Then you have an, a habit, an action. And then the action gives you what? Reward. That's the circle. Okay? So I'll give you an illustration. Oh, I'm hungry. That's a trigger. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Choco flan. <laughs> I'm hungry. Choco flan. And then the reward is 
Oh, it feels good. And then a little bit here, right there. And then I'm hungry again. Uh, more choco flan. And then a little bit more here. And then I'm hungry again. Mm, tacos de tripita. <laughs> and then more here and more here and more here. And the results. And so I go, okay, uh, I need to change my habits. So the next time I feel hunger, I'm going to choose a salad. And I'm going to reward myself with the fact that I know I'm being faithful to God. And in time, the more salads I choose, salads or something positive, something healthy, then what? I'm going to get results. And I'm going to get good results. So this loop works bad or it works good. It works both ways. you got to choose which way it's going to work for you, okay? So when you see something, like guys, a lot of guys have a problem with lust. They look and they go, oh, wow, that's a beautiful woman. And then they start thinking all this negative, you know, go into the dark side stuff. And I tried when I was younger, a new Christian, and I still try to do this today. When I see that, I go, oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. You've created a beautiful person. Lord, bless them and, 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 and keep my heart pure and, and just pray blessings over that person and then move on to something else. Instead of falling into the trap of then you begin to think the negative way. Create a system that helps your habit, create a habit loop that helps reward you in a good way, not in a bad way. Okay, so one, and here's some tips on this system loop thing. Number one, make it obvious. Make your, your systems obvious. Trigger the obvious. Make it obvious. See, grocery stores know this about us. We choose the obvious. We choose what we can see, okay? And if you want to prove, I'll prove this to you right now. Go to your next grocery store. Go to the cereal aisle. When you go to the cereal aisle, you will see about yay high across the board through the whole cereal aisle. And how high is this? It's the height of your children's eyes, folks. Yay high across all the cereal aisle in every supermarket in this town and in this country are sugared cereals. Captain Crunch, Choco Cocos, whatever they're called, <laughs> Zucaritas, or for, for us who speak English, Zucaritas are the... Frosted flakes, all that good, delicious, evil stuff. They put them right there at children level so that when you're going down the aisle with your children, mommy, mommy, look. And if you want the good stuff like the, the, the oatmeal and the, the, you know, the granola, things that are good for you, you got to look way high or way low, hidden way there in the back. They make the junk food obvious. And if you want to change, you got to make your, your habits obvious. What do I mean by that? For example, I want to take vitamins every day. If you want to start taking your vitamins, put your vitamins right by the coffee machine. <laughs> I need coffee every day. Oh, there's my vitamins. I'll take them. You'll start taking your vitamins if you put the vitamins right by the coffee machine or whatever your drink of choice is every morning when you get up. Make it obvious. I want to read more. Leaders are readers, and we all want to be readers, so let's read more. Put the book by your bed on the nightstand right there. When you see it, you'll go, oh, I forgot. I'm trying to read. I'm going to read a couple chapters before I go to bed tonight. Make your habit obvious. Set yourself up for winning, okay? Um, you, you say, I want to write a note every day. I want to be a better person. Start writing notes. Put the note right there. Uh, put it in your desk, a little stack of notes and thank you notes. If you want to be someone who cares, do that. Write a note of appreciation every day. If you want to be a person who's organized, make your bed. If you want to be a godly example, pray. Make it obvious and put it in front of your face. Change what you're looking at. Make it obvious, okay? Number two, make it easy. This is good. Oh, you guys are going to like this. We tend to make stuff difficult. We like to Make stuff all complicated. Just pick one easy thing to do. I'm going to read one chapter three times this week in the Bible. Do that. That's better than no chapters in the Bible this week. 
We, we want to, you know, we think we have to, you know, I have to read a million chapters this week. No, no, just make it easy. Read one chapter a week, uh, uh, one chapter every day or something. I want to hold my spouse. You know, you say you want to pray with your wife, and some of us, you know, I pray with my wife, and like, she's like 45 minutes just getting started in prayer. <sighs> no, no, babe, I can't do 45 minutes, but let's, let's just make it easy. Can I just thank God for one thing with you today? And hold your wife's hand, look her in the eye. Thank you, Lord, that we have breath today, that we are breathing. Oh, Lord, thank you that I am alive today. Amen. Okay, wife, I got to go to work. Do something. That's better than nothing. That's a start. And if you start doing that little thing every day, it adds up. We, we found out last night at the meeting with all the wives, the wives gave us a secret female trick. Guys, you want to hear this. You want to get you know, your wife to love you and be even romantically interested in you more. This is the secret, guys. I, I learned this last night. Do some dishes. <laughs> do the dishes. You do the dishes and you're sexy, buddy. <laughs> and that's easy. It's easy, guys. Just do the dishes. It's so easy. So you want to help your Help your love life, your romance, do the dishes. It's very easy, okay? It's not hard. Uh, you know, you, some of us, like, I want to journal more, and, and they start writing books. You don't have to write a book. Just write one sentence. Make your journaling easy. Make, your, make it easy. See, if you're not reaching your goals, you don't have a goal problem. You have a system problem. You're not doing the system right. Are goals completely useless? No. They give you the vision for what you want. But the goals help you set direction, but they're not the things that give you the victory. It's the habits that give you the victory. Create your systems. And here you, you can do this. I will do this, whatever it is, after I do that. Like I said, after I make my coffee, I will take my vitamins. And then you put your Bible right there, like coffee, vitamins, Bible, Put them all right in a row before you go to bed. I will have my coffee, I will take my vitamins, and I will read my Bible. That's a simple system that helps you with victory in that area. I had, when Zachary was born, even before he could read or listen, or I mean, he could listen, I guess, but he couldn't talk or understand. He was just kind of sitting there. like. When he would go to bed, every night, we would say, Lord, thank you for my son. Bless him. And I would pray with my son. And even to this day, every night before he goes to bed, I, I'll talk to him. I'll say, Zachary, what's one thing you're grateful for today? And he'll say, well, I got to talk to my friend over the phone, uh, the FaceTime back in Austin. All right. You're thankful for that. Lord, thank you for the computer technology you've given us. Thank you for your friend in Austin. Thank you, Lord, that my son has a friend that he can talk to through the computer. Lord, we thank you for computers. We thank you for the internet. We thank you for technology. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray with him every night. Just one little thing. Now, is that hard to do? Easy. But listen, I think in the long run, if he grows up remembering daddy prayed with him every night, What's that going to do for his walk of faith? What's that going to do for him as a man growing up, learning what life is about? I hope it's going to impact him. You know, after I do this, I will do that. When I put my boy to bed, I will pray with him. Simple. You guys writing that down? Write down. After I do this, I will do this. Go home. That's some homework. Pick one habit and then make a little plan. Make it obvious and make it easy. Look at what it says in Matthew 13. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field. And this is smaller than all other seeds, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. That's the kingdom of heaven. The point being... The kingdom of heaven itself is an imperceptible thing. But when it's planted, it grows into a big thing. Never underestimate the power of small things. 
and me praying with my son for five, less than five minutes every night is a small thing, but it can grow into a huge, huge thing. That's the way God works his kingdom out. It starts with a little gospel presentation, and it turns into a person's life completely transformed. Maybe you're not satisfied, it's discontent, it's something, you need something more. Some of us just set soul goals. What do I mean by soul goals? We do this thing, we go, well, I want to go to school. Why? Well, so that I can get a career. And what do you want? Well, I want to get a career. Why? So that I can get me a wife. And I want to get me a wife so that, so that I can have kids. And I want to have kids, and then so that, so they can grow up and be, you know, great people. And, and it's this so that thing. The goal is always in the future, okay? That's not bad, but, but it's not who I want to be. It's so. How about this? I want to be a faithful man today so that I can work hard and get the schooling. And I, but I want to be faithful today to all that I'm doing you see, you honor God with the small things every day. And the problem with a future goal is you don't feel you're successful until you hit it, right? I'll feel satisfied and successful when I'm walking across that, that uh, what, the, the stage getting my degree. Okay, I've finished my degree. I've succeeded. I'm successful, right? So, you think when that day comes, then I'll have achieved my goal and then I'll be successful. And what I'm saying is the exact opposite. You're successful because today you're faithful. Hey, I went to school today. I did my homework today. I'm doing good today. Yeah, I'll get the degree someday. You see, if, if my goal is I'm gonna lose 100 pounds, well, I'm sad and miserable till I lose the 100 pounds. But guess what? You know what I did last week? And some of you saw it on Facebook. I ran three times last week. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. No, I need that accountability, seriously. And, and I ate some pretty good meals. I, I did have uh, some sugary drinks the other night. But that's okay, because guess what? I was faithful to run three times this week. And so I can celebrate in that victory that I was faithful to God this week to do that. You be faithful to your habits and to the Lord. I'll lose the pounds, but I gotta celebrate being faithful every day. Does that make sense? I wanna encourage you guys. I'm successful when I've honored God today. Not when I lose the 100 pounds. I'm successful that today I ran, and today I did some good choices with my eating, and today I picked to read the Bible, and today I prayed with my son when he went to bed, and today I floss, and today I was healthy. Does that make sense? You can celebrate every day instead of, when I lose the 100 pounds, then I can celebrate. No, 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 today, 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 the small things, the small things, the small things, right? Lord God, 